Welcome to the Zadzooks Happy Hour, a podcast exploring the latest in film, TV, games, toys, and more. And now, somewhere in a secret bunker outside of Washington, D.C., here are your hosts, 30-year veteran of pop culture and entertainment news for the Washington Times, Joseph Zadkowski, and pop culture, technology, and space aficionado, Todd Stowell. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? It's going? Hey there. It's going great. How are you? Don't pick the licorice ones. No. That's my tip for the day. This this segment is, is sponsored by unofficially sponsored by Goldenrod Kisses, celebrating over 100 years of quality in York Beach, Maine. But what are they? It's the saltwater taffy. Saltwater taffy from Maine, man. Got it. It's amazing. I used to go there all the time as a kid. It's really cool cuz they they actually take the Taffy and they spin it churn, for you. Spurn it. No, they spin it in the windows. It's like a boardwalk oh, that you I walk see. through, and it's really cool Very to watch cool. them do it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely cool. a skill. So, how was Overlord? Okay, you clowns got me so excited. You didn't and like it. So hyped, oh, and my no. son had the same reaction. He had he had gotten so hyped and so excited about this movie. It wasn't that great. You didn't like it. It was a meh. Really? Yeah. You sure it was it wasn't, a mess. Sure, it wasn't the mood you were in. No, I was in a. I was so excited. It was like I, we blocked out time. We're gonna sit down. Both of us were just like, yes, and we just went, mm, oh, okay. There just wasn't enough. Yeah, I would. I it was would, an R-rated movie. I would. They agree. They could have just kept going. I would agree with that. There's only like three or four major conflicts in it. Yeah. There's a couple of super soldiers in it. And that's about it. Yeah, the the super soldiers, the guys that sort of look like Ryan Reynolds in before he was Deadpool. Remember yeah. when his mouth yes. was sewn shut? Yes. They didn't really do anything. They just sort of walked out from a back room, stood there, and that was that. Um, I I thought. So the, wait, you're backing down now? No, no, it's no. It's not the best. I, I think the challenge of trying to make it this crazy over the top thing is there's only like four guys there's only so much you can do with four people well i mean they had a couple of nice scenes with machine guns where they were mowing down nazis yeah they could have they could have those those could have easily have been monstrosities coming out of that door rather than it could have been that or it could have been better guns and more people coming out of that door for sure so you were just meh with it 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 got overhyped if I had gone in and just known, I mean, Jared was saying at one point there was a trailer where some guy ripped his face off. Yeah, I thought that was in the movie. I don't remember seeing that. Oh. He didn't see it either. Well, it was the guy who was missing half of his face. Right. He rips like so, part of his yeah, face off. I didn't see that. So what did you think about the scene with the soldier who dies Coming and, back, and and he comes back, and he ends up like split neck, split like neck. John Carpenter thing. Yeah, like what'd you think of that? It was okay, but once again, I've seen better. I've seen, and here's the problem: I was completely spoiled, and here's why. There's a movie called Frankenstein's Army that was released in in 2013, and it's about um, the end of World War II, and there's a Soviet reconnaissance party that guess what they stumble upon they stumble upon an underground lair with a crazed nazi scientists creating mutants okay and it's very visceral and it's very so i wonder if i had seen that if i would have had the same reaction i mean that movie it's only like 84 minutes but oh they pack a lot in Mm. Now, and, and are you ever going to see this movie? And, and there's a reason it's called Frankenstein's Army. And, of course, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's got to be gory, right? Oh, it's super gory. Yeah. It's, so it's really... And I was going into this movie thinking, Call of Duty, Nazi zombies. Not really. Because there really wasn't that many major confrontations with an army. You know what I mean? So the only thing I couldn't really figure out, and maybe it was because I didn't catch it, the the blonde haired guy, did yeah. he get the serum? Yeah. Okay, I missed that part for right. some reason, and then they just start throwing each other around the room. 
And the major Nazi corporal sergeant soldier in that yeah. is the guy from Game of Thrones mm-hmm. who basically gets his butt kicked right. in that entire show on yep. Game of Thrones, yep. right? Yep. So it's kind of fun they got a little revenge finally. Yeah. Yeah. But so you were so because well, okay, well, you had something to base it off of and compare it to. Yeah, and I also played Wolfenstein, which is basically the same story. Hmm. And it's and in Wolfenstein, they can do anything because it's a video game. I mean, it's interesting that it did get fairly decent reviews. Yes, yes, that's why I was even more excited. Yeah, I liked it. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, but I thought I—I I mean, again, I hadn't seen the other one. If I had seen the other one. For me, this was like, all right, this is something new I haven't seen before. This is pretty sweet. And there was no end credit scene. There's a hundred percent chance they should have had one. They've oh, got all this. Or, oh, like an arm. Yes, out of the rubble yes. Or something. They've got all this rubble laying on the ground. Well, especially after the guy says, "Should we dig down yes. there?" Yes. Uh, Nothing. Yeah, that actually would have been pretty sweet. Because I waited. Did you go? So you went all the way through? To oh the end? yeah. Really? I wanted to see if there was going to be because it was obvious there should have been. So there, all right, I'm a little grumpy. Huh. That's good points. I still liked it. Well, I, mean, I need to... It wasn't my favorite movie. I need to find find out if Frankenstein's Army is on Netflix, and you should watch it. I'll watch it. That's the thing. So what are you giving it, then? Uh, it's not It's not original. I guess you're giving it a pretty low score for non-originality. C, B minus. Okay. It could have been so much more. It could have been. And you know what? They had lots of money. That budget, the, the, the production design, it looked beautiful. the costume design, it was all great looking. I mean, the, the effects were done by ILM. The cinematography. All right? ILM was, did was the, the effects. Everything beautiful. was there. It, yep. it was all in place. Well, and I think that's why J.J. Abrams was executive producer because he brought some of that with him. Sure. He had to have. Oh, yeah, easily. Now, the director, I don't really know him from very much. I mean, so I didn't really have anything to compare it to. I thought it was just something. <clears throat> I think the trailer made it seem like it was zombies. Right. 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 And so I got really hyped for like, sweet, we're going to get a zombie World War II movie. Yep. This is the way it's going to be. It's yep. going to be awesome. I didn't. I was disappointed there that it was more super soldier. Right. But I did think that the premise was kind of cool. And then the, the, the horrible things happening to these people and how it didn't really seem to affect them was sort of zombie-esque, yeah. if you will. Yeah. But also, they could be killed. Now, it would be... Well, yeah. You had to crush their heads. Crush their heads or, right. or shoot them through the head, right? Or burn them. Well, I guess... Now, I think you have you, to you have to take the brain out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, one way or the other, you have to take the brain out. But they could have done a lot with, because um, a guy got shot in the heart, right? And he didn't just matter. gets back up and he's yeah. just roaming around. Guy got a pole through his chest. Yeah. Didn't matter. Yeah. Um, the one scene that I thought was really was was cool was when the the main guy finds his friend and he's got. Yeah. That thing hooked to him. Right. And then he's walking around the lab and he sees all these people in these, I don't know what they are. They're like but, cocoons. But here's the thing with that guy. They never played that story out. No. Nothing happened to him. No. I expected at one point to him be laying on the ground and like come back as like super soldier or something. Nothing happened. They just pull this giant like hypodermic rod needle out of him and nothing and, and and eventually he's shooting a machine gun. Yeah. But, but yeah. he also made a comment, which I think he is a super soldier, and here's why. Because the guy that's with him, who's sort of the wisecracker, yeah. he's like, come on, man. And he's like, normally it takes two people to shoot this gun. Right, I remember that. And he's doing it by that's himself. Right. So I wonder if maybe he's got a okay. little bit of it in him. But why are we dealing with subtle in a movie like this? I don't know. Right? I don't know. I, now, Spell now, it out. Now now you're making me rethink it. See? All right. I'm going to say this. It was an entertaining movie. I was entertained. And it was something different that, quite honestly, people just aren't putting out very much that, of. Except if you play <laughs> Call of Duty Nazi Zombies for yeah. the last 10 years. Yeah. Or, or Wolfenstein. Right. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going with a B plus. It could have been so much more. I'm telling you, it could have been so much more. But isn't that the whole premise of like the Cloverfield movies too? 
they're they're like in principle they're so good and they just don't take it that extra step. Like Ten Cloverfield Lane was amazing, but they could have right. And there's two there, al- there's alternate endings, so you don't you know you don't right. really know which one you know there's the one that they used yes. and then there's the alternate ending, which I actually like the alternate ending better. And then there's the Cloverfield paradox, which doesn't really have anything to do with, with... I mean, I don't know what Bad Robot is doing. I don't either. It's like they, they've, got, they've got the framework, and they just... It's, don't know what to do with it. It's like the last act <clears throat> just isn't there. It's his Star Wars. He just can't figure out where to put it. I mean, there is... A, uh, they do good work. It's yeah. just... It's like the last act of the film... Just to sort of like, ugh. Because, I mean, the buildup in Overlord was going oh, yeah. to be it's, epic. It's almost an hour in before things start right. to happen. And you're getting really pumped during the whole thing because you're like, oh, man, this is great. They've got that, you, you know, know, the main guy. It's essentially a Saving Private Ryan mini-movie yeah. before then. Yeah. All well done. And it's and and I, and I do see your point. It does, in the last act, it falls a little bit short. It should have been hordes, hordes of super soldiers, you know, and these guys trying to figure out how to stop them because they're basically alone there's, until, and you know, the 101st Airborne got like blew out of the sky, most of them anyway, yeah. in reality. Yeah. Well, and also that was the other thing. It was sort of like, really? They only managed to have four, four guys. Pe- four guys. Nobody else was there. No one else was around. Yeah. So, all right. I see your point. All right, sorry. Didn't mean to beat that to death. No, it's all right. It's fine. You know, you do what you got to do. So, uh, but you kept talking about oh, it for weeks, man. I, I'm, you know, you were what? jumping for joy because to me it was something Different. I hadn't seen before. Okay, that I was excited about. You obviously have seen a movie that's better than it. So, right. maybe who knows? Maybe they were remaking it. Although, I thought I read something that Overlord was. A, no, you know what? I'm going to go back and check it during the break. I think it's a remake of that 2013 movie. No, no way. Okay. I don't think I, it is. I'm going to check. Okay. All right. What else you got? Are we taking a break or where are we at? Oh, hey. Oh. I mean, that's your call. Or do you want to jump into something else? Sure. I can do one more. Which one? So another movie that's not making me happy yet. I was told how brilliant it was, was Bohemian Rhapsody. Who told you that? Oh, my son yeah. and, and other people who had seen it. I heard it wasn't very how good. How amazing it was. And? You know what? It's supposed to be a biographical drama, and it's revisionist history, mm-hmm. which makes no sense to me, because two of the band members who were actually there during all the events seem to have no problem with it. Anywhere in the supplements or the featurettes or anything else, they're just going along with it. They, Which makes no sense to me. Do they talk about his homosexuality at all? Yes. It's strong. It's, remember, this is a PG-13 movie, mm-hmm. so it's strongly hinted at. You obviously know by the end of the movie he's with a guy, mm-hmm. but his, his long love, Mary, is still there. And, and, and the, the, the thing that's... They build up this Live Aid performance to be not only like the pinnacle of this group's career... But like this reemergence of the group and the group getting back together and then the group finding out like right before as they're rehearsing that he has AIDS and how it's not true. Mm-mm. And none of it's true. So what are they doing? Like mini movie of the week? Then you know what? If if that's the case, then it, it's not going to win an Oscar for Best Picture. You would think it wouldn't. Because it's not reality. I mean, I still think Ra- Ra- I don't know who I picked, but Ramey should might win best actor. I mean, he he did a great job. Sounds like Freddie Mercury. He did a great job. I mean, and yes, Live Aid was absolutely the one of the pinnacle moments of that band's career. Yeah, but it wasn't. But it wasn't everything. He, he didn't, he, and he also didn't. I don't think he told them he was gay just before he went out, or that he had AIDS no. before he went out on stage. No, and that's, they did. That's later, right? Oh, years later. Yeah, that's what I thought. And he didn't have. Um, they hadn't broken up. They had toured almost the entire year. Right. Before Live Aid. Right. So it wasn't like they were sitting around doing nothing. Well, you know, it's interesting because I listened to an interview with Sasha Baron Cohen, and he said that 
the band refused his script and that he basically felt like because remember I had, I think I'd said that they wanted Freddie Mercury to die and they wanted it to be a love story of the band and he's like no this is a Freddie Mercury biopic it's not it's not really it's about how awesome Queen is in a lot of ways yeah yeah you're right mm-hmm. so and that's because of the remaining surviving band members who were there who are going to write rewrite their own story I mean it seems that way that's that, and he was complaining about that he said he just he was he had the script it was ready to go and they wouldn't sign off on it and they wanted it a different way and he said how can you have a queen movie where freddie mercury dies in the first act right and they're like well it's a, it's a love story about the band and he's like no it isn't no but freddie queen's not queen without freddie mercury you can't just kill him off well that's what i said <laughs> and i got flamed and and destroyed for saying it so Go figure. I mean, I know they're still around and everything, but really, like, you listen to Queen, and and it's Freddie Mercury, man. He's, I mean, yeah, the actual song, Bohemian Rhapsody, he's the one who came up with all the craziness of that right. song, which is why they could never perform it live, because they, they had to play the recorded part. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because they couldn't reproduce it. So, I mean, <sighs> the guy had a unique sound, that that has never really been re, you know found again because he's I right think, he's forget, one in a million yeah like what's his nationality it, he, he was from Zanzib- Zanzibar yeah right so and he's just got a unique you know accent four octave range and you know he's got the teeth that are obviously not helping him much but they yeah help. i mean he was a an eccentric but an amazing sound Right. And it doesn't matter who you put in as a front man, a queen. It, queen it will always be known as Freddie Mercury's band. Period. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, gay or heterosexual, he was a front man and a rock star. That's uh, what he was. A rock star. star. You go back and you watch that Live right. Aid concert. and that, He's controlling that tempo. He's, he's controlling that audience. He, that, that audience is on him. Right. I mean, he is prancing around. So there's about an hour's worth of extras. Of course. A uh, lot of butt kissing. A lot of uh, what he, Brian May gushing and smiling all over the place and how great things any, are. like leg, legacy footage of him? So uh, this is even better. So first of all, there's, there's obviously no director commentary because Brian Singer got fired right. weeks before the end of the production and mm-hmm. the other guy wasn't even credited as the director for whatever SAG rules there are. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have easily had uh, Rami and Mr. Taylor and Mr. May. There's no, but you know why they didn't? Because they weren't going to be able to explain what was going on in the movie, right? Yeah. They couldn't sit there and lie on top of it. And then they give us the full version of the fake band performing Live Aid. Now, any idiot can go to YouTube and find that original performance in seconds. Watched it recently. You're telling me they couldn't have gotten the original footage, cleaned it up, made it look great, and presented it for people to see what this guy really was about? It's literally one of the greatest live performances of a band. That entire three-day festival, or however long it was, U2 stood out, but Queen definitely stood out. Queen, Queen won that whole event. Yeah, so... I was watching it, and the Who were there, and they, and Brian uh, Roger forgot "Won't Get Fooled Again." It was the most insane thing he I'd he, ever he seen. He forgot the lyrics, right? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't he came the, in at the wrong time and forgot the lyrics? But wasn't that when he was really like strung out? No, he was never strung out. I thought I thought he was he was just a bonehead. Oh, and then Pete Townsend fell over. <laughs> Later on in the set, I do remember. That. <laughs> and so Roger, to make up for it, rolled over with him. To make it look like. And that was when Led Zeppelin reunited. Mm-hmm. And that was a poop show also. Right. Because they weren't ready. Okay. Sorry. Man, I'm in a grumpy mood tonight. So okay. Fu- that's, so, so what are you giving this one? Uh, B minus again. You know, once again, everyone... Is that an amazing movie? Yeah, not really. It's well, not. Not when they're rewriting it. That takes points off. Yeah. So... I mean, I think Malik deserves something for that because he did a great, yeah, dude. I don't. His transformation is startling. 
on how similar he looks. Yeah. And, I mean, he did sing a, nah, some of it, nah, right? No, not really. Oh, really? He might have sang Happy Birthday at one point in the movie. But other than that, it's it's um, Freddie, and it's, uh, it's a guy um, named Mark Martell, uh, who just happens to be a perfect Freddie Mercury uh, imitator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of this like, guy before. brilliant. Yeah. He sounds just like him. And he kind of even looks like him. And they're out on tour. W- as Queen? Yeah. The, you know, it's like not. It's like kind of the celebrating Queen or something like so, that. So it's a cover band, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Well, you should just go out on with Queen. Well, they got Adam Lambert. What are you going to do with Adam Lambert? Adam's such a... I mean, there'll be an American Idol, like, celebrity He's such edition. a tour de farce. I mean, force. All right, hey, that's enough. All right, we're going to take a break. I'm going to let you... Yeah, and you're going to lighten us up, huh? water taffy and come back. Community's Digital News, built by the writers and editors that deliver the news 24 hours a day. Visit comdiginews.com. That's C-O-M-M-D-I-G-I news.com. And support the next evolution in news. So I think well, let's let's rewrite some history here in other movies. Sure. So how about I, Apollo 13? We're going to do Apollo 13, and I think the ship's going to explode but they still have time to land on the moon and walk around for a bit. They're going to come back up, get their socket sets out, fix it. There and, you go. Everything's fine. That would make a great movie, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be great. Um, I think we're going to remake Back to the Future. Okay. And But we're going to replace the DeLorean with the original pea green station wagon from Vacation. Okay. And Doc Brown... Isn't a doctor? He's a psychologist, <laughs> yeah, right? Perfect. That, that works. <laughs> yep. So yeah, we could we could we could do any of this stuff. Man, you know what? Netflix has got to cut us a deal. Revisionist. Yep. All right. So, Wild Wild Country. You saying that you're watching it? Yeah, and I. After the build up you've given that, I better not be disappointed, and we're not off to a good start. The first episode. Now I understand what they're doing. The first episode is all of these cult members or members of this guy guy's faction mm-hmm. gushing about how brilliant he is. No, it, but you're getting little flashes from like DAs and yep. and yep. police officers and townspeople in Antelope, Colorado. Those poor people. There are like fifty people in that town, and they get they get swami. They renamed the town at one point. They get swami by these people who show up and just. Bought eighty thousand acres yep. of, of of farmland, which was essentially all mountainous rock. So there was some pieces, it gets, and they just moved in. It gets really to to realize that it's a true story. Yeah, it gets really dark. So I'm excited for and, second episode. And, and now you said they're making a movie of it, so I think so. So we'll see. And I just heard uh, last week they just started production of Bad Boys for Life, Bad Boys 3. Go great. So get ready for that. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch anything else? Any other movies that you screened? Well, I'm going to hold on to A Star is Born until next week. Okay. But I did. And you know what? That was a good movie. I really did enjoy it. Okay. And the singing was fantastic. Well, of course. I mean, she's a... Yeah, but he too. He's a, he's he's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, also she probably helped him out a little and bit. And she's just so every time you look at her, she has got that Judy Garland, Liza Minnelli, and even Barbara Streisand face mm-hmm. in any given moment. So I really like her. It's I my understanding is is wasn't isn't her background in theater or something like that? I don't know. I know. I, she's, I think she was literally exactly like she was in the movie. Yeah, she was an. Unknown songwriter right. who just got discovered. It's the same thing with uh, some of the other big pop stars right now. Yeah. There were like backup dancers or backup singers. Well, for... Sheryl Crow was a backup singer for Michael Jackson at one point. Right. So and I th- um and some of them were they just wrote songs and didn't sing and their songs were very very popular. I mean Pharrell was like that. Yeah. All of his songs he just wrote for other people. So, all right, all right. we can jump into some Netflix stuff. I thought we already had. If you're interested in that. Sure. So I 
I know you won't watch this, and it's okay. You don't have to. I did because I like John Goodman. I love John Goodman, um, but why won't I watch this? Are you going to overhype this too? No, it's okay. it's long, and it's at times, it's like a courtroom drama. It's it's called. I love um, courtroom dramas. Black Earth Rising, uh, essentially. Uh, there's John Goodman is he's a he's a barrister. He works in the UK. He tries a lot of cases. Don't tell me he has a British accent. No, thank. He's a, he's American. Goodness. He's American. Is he but, real, or is he a fictional character? Um, this is uh, based on a book, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, it's so it's a. 2018 drama that originally aired in the UK about the prosecution of international war criminals, specifically uh, individuals involved in the Rwandan genocide. Got so it. you are you're part of the series. You're in France. Part of it, you're in the UK, and a lot of it, you're in Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, it the the main sort of uh, one of the main characters dies in the first episode, which was sort of interesting. I guess I see why they did it that way. It's a little, um, it's a little scattered. I feel like it's, um, I don't want to say it's like totally schizophrenic, but there's like, they're trying to cram a bunch of storylines in together and it's just hard to figure out. So the premise is that there is this woman that works for John Goodman's characters law firm. She's a, she's an investigator and she is a, was uh, taken out of Rwanda during the genocide and was rescued. And her mother is his business partner, essentially, his, his partner. And there's a secret, but none of them want to tell her what the secret is. Okay. And they build to the point where they're eventually revealing the secret. And it's kind of... Don't spoil it. Anticlimactic. Okay. Um, but they're prosecuting... Uh, multiple people. There's, there's. It's conspiracy theorists, in that the French were backing the government that eventually committed the genocide, but they won't admit it. And there's a lot of this sort of stuff being dug up. It's just a little all over the place. Okay. Um, John Goodman's pretty good in it. There are times where he just seems like he's bored. Bored, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, kind of. The way he's talking, it's just like I don't feel like he's acting so much as he's just reciting the dialogue. You know what I mean? Like other times, he's great. I mean, there's one point where he jumps in the water to like save someone, and he comes out and he's like falling over, and like that looks really good. And there are other times he's like sitting at his desk. He's got a crazy amount of dialogue. So have you watched any of the Michael Douglas, Alan Arkin show on Netflix? Which one is that one? I don't know what it's called, not but it, they promote the heck out of it. It's like a half hour comedy. Not You're not yet. a comedy guy, though, no, right? I love comedy. Okay. Yeah. I just, Old man comedy? I'll take whatever I can get. Okay, if it, it makes me laugh, I'm all in. All right. Never so, mind. So this is, and again, there are people who say it misrepresents the, the Rwandan genocide and that it's not really... Ah, revisionist? Not revisionist. It's just, you know, it's fictional partially it's just i don't know what it is it's kind okay. of a, it's kind of a hornet's nest of things i like john goodman so i stu- i stuck with it was it his best performance i think they didn't really do a lot in the writing for his character at times um it's like a c plus okay not 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 the greatest i've seen and it, and it definitely at times dragged and they also do this weird thing where they occasionally cut to animation and there's like a story being told narrated while you're watching this right. animation, which is a little it's I mean the animation was nice, it was just a little weird. Okay. And also everybody in it is sick. So so uh Goodman's character has a prostate problem and they keep showing his toilet filled with blood. And for some reason in every episode at least two people vomit. Okay. We don't know why, but Okay. It's, uh, it's like unnecessary to the plot. But Whatever, it's fine. And I'm two episodes into the Umbrella Academy, and I'm liking and it. And you're liking it. I'm liking it because it's not getting great reviews. I don't know where it's going. If it stays at it's, if it stays at this pace and it doesn't accelerate, it'll be a disappointment. If it builds okay. into something that is a satisfying ending, fine. Got it. But I'm not there yet to be able to to accurately tell you whether I'm disappointed or not. Fair. I'm enough. not sure how well the comic was received. 
or the the uh, graphic novel. I mean, I know it's a dark horse. The graphic, the comic book series was very well received. Hmm. People loved it. Well, I noticed that the creators were not executive producers; they were just producers. So that I thought was interesting. They've got good talent, good right. cast, um, and the CGI effects on the talking monkey are out of this world. Okay, it's like oh yeah, it has a talking monkey. It's like. Um, uh, the last Planet of the Apes. Yeah, it's that like, was awesome. It's, I mean, it's like that. The fur is. Mo- I mean, that's cool. Really, uh, for for a series, it's crazy. So yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? I got no updates on Ghostbusters, so I can't help you there. You're sure? I'm pretty sure. Uh, Transformers Ectomobile. Yeah, that just came out of Toy Fair. I guess. Aren't there's you a, excited? There's a lot of stuff coming out of Toy Fair. We're so, gonna have to try to get a roundup of all of it. Yeah, and then you and I have something very exciting going on yeah, soon. Yeah, soon, couple weeks, two weeks. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get a look at Division Two. Yeah, which is getting mixed reviews already uh, on some of the on the beta gameplay. Okay, people seem to be upset that it might be doing in game purchases or that they might include loot boxes throughout the game. Oh, so let's bust the developers on that. Yeah, I don't get that. That's the complaint. It's like I don't mind loot loot throughout the game. Like what's like for hardcore gamers, that's a problem. Like having I mean, if you have to buy it. Having yeah, but they're saying like just loot crates in a game. Well that's normal. Is is, is unexpl- I've been playing Kingdom Hearts three and everything is a loot crate. Well that's what I'm saying. I mean I, listen, I don't like having to buy stuff in game in order yeah. to play better. Like no. I'd be disappointed with that too. But from what I saw, the gameplay looked good. I don't know what they were talking about. So okay. we're gonna we'll find out. We're gonna check it in a couple weeks. We'll have some interviews with the yes. game creators and Yes. We'll report back on the catering. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> we'll be talking about the developing. Thank you. All right, you got anything else? No, I'm good. You're good. That was good. I feel I like got a lot off my chest on this you, show. You're gonna go home and have a- I, once again. I will have the major queen contingent hating my guts. So I thank you so much. But there's nothing to hate, man. You just you're. you're- By the way, they had a whole brouhaha that they glossed over in that movie too about Queen playing South Africa, mm-hmm. right during the time of this whole bust around apartheid stuff. Mm-hmm. They don't mention that. None of that's in there at all. There's nothing. There's very few negatives in this movie. You know, other than the fact that the the main lead singer does eventually die, but you know. So as bad as this sounds, I think that films that do a true retelling where the bulk of the people involved are no longer living, right, tell a more authentic story. I agree. And there you know what? There is no reason to not tell the truth in this movie because it's pretty amazing what these guys did. It's not like they weren't one of the best rock bands in the history of the world. Yeah, It's not, you know, it, it's nothing wrong with showing some of the bad with I mean, all the good. You can't tell me the Rolling Stones have didn't have yeah, their, come on. Their, their issues. Or I mean, the Who. Or the Beatles. Or Led Zeppelin. Or, you know? I mean, every band goes through its ups and downs. You have people leave, people trash talk. Right. I mean, it's a part of that's a part of rock and it's roll. It's a part man. of it. It just is. I All mean, right. and you know what? You're a purist. You like the original band. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I like the thank original you. Ghostbusters. There I don't you go. like the remake. I don't blame you. There it is. All right. Thank you. See ya.